It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Baltimore Ravens. Next on Madden NFL 24. EA Sports coverage of the NFL on this fine afternoon brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland at M&T Bank Stadium. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. Well, Charles, September is here. The 2023 season just about to get started. So many storylines to pay attention to. What are you most keeping an eye on as the start of the season moves closer? Well, partner, I'm glad you asked because we're going to start, obviously, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. That's a huge story. How about Kansas City? Could they win their third title in five years? We know some teams are trying to get there. Buffalo, Cincinnati, Philadelphia, San Francisco, all should contend. And how about some of those sleeper teams? I think the Chargers of Pittsburgh and the AFC, Carolina, Detroit, and the NFC, it's going to be an exciting season. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. Take Dell now to return it. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback. The second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman Finals, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. Opening play, and Stroud will throw it. This will be caught by Brown. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 28-yard line. Stroud looking to throw. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Stroud on third down now. That is incomplete. Cameron. On fourth down, here's Cameron Johnston on to punt for Houston. Fielded just inside the 30. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that. Talk as the two sides hammered out a deal that made the highest paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, Great things typically happen. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. They work now on second and nine. Now it's Jackson. That one complete to play Shea. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And now that sets up third and two. I have to imagine many defensive coordinators had a sleepless night trying to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? 
But you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and hope you have a corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against his speed guy on the perimeter. Well, so much for that possession. Yeah, I think he tried to do a little too much there, partner. He tried to keep it himself. End up getting buried in the backfield, and that brings up fourth down. Jordan fourth Stout. down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. Desmond King deep for Houston. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Texans will take over. A man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. Yeah, boy, and it's tough to bring him down that time. He surges forward. He's going to get a full six out of that. Second down. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Stroud sets up the play action. Gets the dump off to Pierce. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for just three. And third and one now. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Pierce. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. The second down throw now from Stroud. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Stroud. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Stroud now on first and 10. Man open, that's complete to Dalton Schultz. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big pickup of 38. Well, so often now we're praising tight ends for their nimbleness and how they catch the ball downfield. But occasionally we get a reminder that tight ends, they've got that tough guy aspect too. How about him catching that short one there, shaking off tacklers and turning that into an expansive gain downfield. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Here goes Stroud again. Got this into the hands of the tight end, Jordan. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll take this one down near the 15. 
Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now third down and seven. Throwing now is Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's brought down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a sharp throw right there on third down. They're looking to get the first points of the game, and they certainly don't want to be on a field goal. So that's a nice job to get the hookup and set up a first and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Andrew Beck. It's a one-yard touchdown run. And the Texans are on the board first on the road here in Baltimore. And they just powered it in right there, Charles. Three tight ends out on the field. The fullbacks for the defense, they knew what was coming. They knew, but they weren't able to stop them. They knew they had to meet them with a little bit of force. But on that play, the big guys up front won the day. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> Second and nine now from the 21. Jackson now. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Jackson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Carter, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed, his elusiveness, and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Award that tackle for loss to the linebacker, Denzel Perryman. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it into double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. Jackson's throw complete there to Bateman. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. 
So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. On the option right is Jackson. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson taking it in for 14 yards out. And the Ravens are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Now this defense, so many things to worry about in the red zone area, but you'd have to almost think that Lamar Jackson running the football, that might be number one. It should be number one. And in this portion of the field where things shrink a little bit because the receivers can't run past anyone because they'll run out of real estate, you should have all eyes on Lamar Jackson when the ball is snapped and try and keep him back in the pocket. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised he was running it there. They just couldn't stop him, and he ends up in the end zone. just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Back to throw, here's Stroud. He's got his man, Schultz, coming across the formation. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and 10. Here's Stroud. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Fielded just inside the 20. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 right at the 30. He'll start with a handoff to Dobbins. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Now it's Jackson. And his throw is incomplete. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. 
They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Here's Jackson to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. It's a big play there for Baltimore. 49 yards. Well, Bernie, that's how you make a long drive suddenly. Not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. They'll run up the gut with Dobbins. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Seven, seven, our score after one. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they go to work on a first and goal. Dobbins fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Good work there, holding him out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? From the two now, second and goal. And Jackson going to hold on to it. And he is going to lose yardage here. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Well, that's going to bring up a big call now because he's unable to make the play himself on second down. Now you just have to wonder. Will they keep the ball in his hands on third down? Line of scrimmage at the four. Here's third and goal. Now Jackson toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Blanket in coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Kick is good, and they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So they are able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you have to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punt, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. now following the made field goal set to kick it away and this will not be returned it's a touchback and they'll begin at the 25 Houston set to take over the last series form a little disappointing forced to punt and now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive first and ten and he gets forward up the middle but only for a couple it'll be second down You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Uh, give to Pierce now on the option, and he powers his way up past the 30. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Stroud out of the gun here. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And he is going to have a Texans first down, although it doesn't appear to be by much. He needed four, and he got four on third down. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. 
You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Stopped in his tracks and given a loss on that play by Patrick Queen. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Play action. Stroud now. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit. Had him back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Stroud off the play fake. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full ten yards here. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. Patrick Queen got in there to stick him. He gets the sack. Even keeping the back in for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Now Dobbins again on second down. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Well, that second down run, a big help. The seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Jackson looking to throw on third. He'll swing this out to Dobbins. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Here's Jordan Stout now. Here's King. 
It'll be a 10-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And now out comes Houston. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Stroud now on second down. Got a man. It's Brown. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. And this offense on third down today, they've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This is third and eight. Stroud on third down now. This will be caught once again by Brown. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted they would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Now second and seven from the 23. Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now two yards to go on third down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Third and two. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Right back to Dobbins on first. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there, and the defense was ready to jump in and deny it, and they did. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From the gun, Jackson. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. On third down, Jackson. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 29-yard line. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Throw right side is complete to Andrews, his tight end. Will go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. On second down, here's Jackson. He finds Bateman over the middle. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Jackson throwing once more. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And in for the Ravens touchdown. J.K. Dobbins from six yards away. And the Ravens will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And now to give us momentum going into the second half, give us that cushion that we're looking for, they got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Tucker with the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. touchdown this fielded right at the goal line and he'll be stopped up at the 25 the Texans with the football here late in this first half but not much time remains here in this first half we'll see if they can get something out of this drive at least a field goal they could certainly use it down by two scores swings this one out wide for Pierce and he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Final play of the half, Stroud. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with a pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a terrific first half from the dual threat quarterback, Lamar Jackson. He had a touchdown both in the air and on the ground to help push his guys into the lead at the break. All right, coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
A 10-point game, 17-7 to score as we get back to it on EA Sports. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. Second half starts with a run by Dobbins. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Now Dobbins again on second down. And it worked his way across the 30 to the 32. 56 yards on the ground for him so far. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with a draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. And he's going to have a Ravens first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Edwards now on first and 10. He'll get this up to about the 44. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's second and seven. Slot man moves right. Now Jackson taps his forward jet sweep, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Here comes third down and seven. Now it's Jackson. He'll find Dobbins out of the backfield. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. So the completion good for six yards, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. From the 22, here's second and eight. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game. And this won't help things either. A loss on that play. Stroud to throw it. second sack of the afternoon. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Here's Cameron Johnston now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away.
And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and they will take over first and 10. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Caught left side, it's Beckham. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Dobbins running out of the gun. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. So from just across the midfield stripe, here's second and nine. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. That's on the guard, Kevin Zeitler. First round pick back in 2012. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Dobbins going to take the handoff on the option. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it brings forth a third and long. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. The Texans offense now. They get set to head back onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now a second and 10. Second and 10, here's Stroud. He finds his target, it's Schultz. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. Uh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. And Stroud now to throw. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Again on second down, it's Stroud. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. 
The throwing again is Stroud. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. Now with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Here's Cameron Johnston now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Here's second and three. Jackson, option right. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Five yards that time, taking it himself, and he has it up for the first. So I mean, that was all you're looking for on a play like that, get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this, I'll take it, I'll pick it up, and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. On second down, a run with Dobbins. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Here's third and a few inches. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the right. And he will have a Ravens first down, at least at first glance, as they'll spot the football just beyond the marker. They find a way to convert on third and inches. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. A couple of first downs have them to the 40 now on first and 10. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. Now Dobbins again on second down. Oh, fighting off the defender. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. 77 yards rushing for him now to this point. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. On third and one, Jackson has taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. On first and 10, it's Jackson. And he'll go right back to Andrews. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down at a yard. Jackson going to keep it running right. The quick feet by Jackson. 
Now he's into the clear again. And all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, 36 yards. And the Ravens are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. Tucker now for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter? run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. David Ajabo running in to take him down. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, Looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He okay. needs better protection, that's for sure. The offense on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and 15. And this will be caught by Brown. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Stroud. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Nice effort from Jalen Petrie getting to him behind the line of scrimmage. Well, he's had success running the football in this one, and that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? They'll run with Dobbins. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, Maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. 
Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. A gain of five, but not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. Nice completion, nice gain. Great tackle. Really good tackle. Kept him in bounds, kept things going. What do you do here? That's the question. Let's see what they do. And no move to take the offense on the field. They're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth and goal. Jackson. Got a man. It's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely there to make the grab. And the Ravens' decision to go for it pays off with six points. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And the lead is now 24. A drive that time of six plays. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown. So now you feel like they really need to respond here. They and now off to the races, down the right side. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Boy, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Delayed give there out of the gun. Defense was ready. And I'm not a big fan of a draw play out of the shotgun formation because the quarterback's not having much action where he's getting away from the line of scrimmage. He's catching the football, making a little head fake, and then handing it off. You should be able to read it as they did there. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Play action. Stroud now. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. No gain on the play there. Second down. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Second and 10. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. Stroud now on third and two. Ball oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. 
They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. They'll try and run for it. And he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. He needed two. He barely got back to the line of scrimmage. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down in this game and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> The drive will commence with a run by J.K. Dobbins. And space opens a bit as he gets it across the 15 to the 17-yard line. 81 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they're powering through, and they're controlling this game. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. They'll go again with Dobbins. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. They go play action now. Jackson. Uh, he had a man over. Open, but he missed him and it's incomplete well the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less we have to be able to convert and I guess every team would say that Charles but an opportunity missed there what they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point and they liked some matchups that they had thought they could exploit them unable to do so on that play and on fourth down on is the punt team sending this one away calls for the fair catch makes the fair catch just inside the 15 yard line and the Texans set to come onto the field. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Stroud now on first and 10. A short one gonna be taken in here by Schultz. And he's gonna get this one across the 30 yard line. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll leave them with a second and just a few inches left. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Stroud now on second down. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for them, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's gonna have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. 
An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Here goes Stroud again. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Kyle Hamilton giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. And this will be caught at the 30. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. Now, no reason not to try it there. They do indeed convert on fourth. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Now Stroud. His throw incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. This is caught, it's Woods. Touchdown, Houston. Robert Woods, 30 yards. And the Texans get a bit closer. Obviously, the scoreboard right now is not the friend of this rookie quarterback, but hey, a touchdown pass there maybe builds a little confidence. Every rep is valuable when you're a rookie. Every time you step up and throw the football, there's a lesson to be learned. Yeah, he took advantage of a little bit of loose coverage there with the lead, but at the same time, got it done. It'll take a little bit of satisfaction away from that throw. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. So it would no doubt be a miracle comeback from here, but let's see what they can do starting with the onside kick. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. The risk reward of the onside kick, when you don't get it, the risk comes out to play, and here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything, because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them, and field position leads you to that type of play calling and whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep those types of things now that they've given up that type of field position the advantage is switched to their opponent they'll start by running the option to the right and that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26 yard line a good chunk on the ground on the keeper, 17 yards, first down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball, but the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. 
ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn.